undisclosed location, somewhere in North America, this is your weekly Truth Be Told Minuteman report. Hey everyone, it's Robert Hensley, your Truth Be Told Minuteman, and today we are talking about cards. Playing cards, but also cards as they're used in divination, right? Forecasting the future. Um, so... <laughs> Here in Appalachia, there's a long history of people creating decks of cards, custom cards, um, f- to be used to foretell the future, to um, potentially see the past, and help people uh, with whatever might be ailing their mind, body, and spirit. <clears throat> but where did all of that start? Um, so you have to go back to 1299. That's the first mention of cards uh, in an Italian manuscript, right? And this first mention reported that the deck had 47 cards in five suits, cups, coins, swords, batons, and polo sticks, plus four court cards per suit, right? Sounds like a hefty deck. (laughs) But um, over time those decks began to simplify. And what most people now know as the earliest deck of playing cards is something called the Venetian deck, which was published by a company called Lombardi in 1320. Now that deck had four suits of 10 cards, cups, coins, swords, and batons, plus 22 trump cards, which we now know as the major arcana, right? Tarot cards. Tarot cards were originally a card game. They were not used for divination. That didn't happen until a little later, right? Cards became incredibly popular. Uh, People, everyone from high class to low class, um, working class, poverty stricken were playing cards. Um, The problem was that there was a rise in gambling. Um, So there were a lot of laws being passed in the... um, 14th and 15th centuries around cards and the publication of cards. Um, But uh, monks even started creating games using cards. Um, In fact, one game uh, was to help teach people morals and to help people memorize the institutions of Justinian. Uh, So it was almost like flashcards. Um, In fact, in 1644, a very young Louis XIV was educated using custom decks of flashcards, right? Um, Now, we start to wonder then, okay, so when did tarot become tarot, right? The tarot that we know when people started doing forecasting with the deck, okay? That comes about in the 1480s with the publication of a book, Uh, a German book called The Book of Fates. Uh, This book, uh, and it's it's amazing how widely popular this book was. They even found a copy uh, in Napoleon's library. But in The Book of Fates, you took the deck of cards and you shuffled them, you drew one card, and then you referred to the book to determine uh, the interpretation of what that card meant at that moment for you. Um, and from there, cards began to be seen as something mystical, right? As having a mystical connection. So much so that in the 18th century, um, a gentleman named Court de Gebelin, uh, tried to prove that the, uh, suits on the card or the suits of the cards, um, and the artwork on the cards had connections to ancient mystical um, teachings and rituals. Um, But the problem was is that a lot of his uh, research skipped over uh, ginormous portions of history, such as the fact that Greeks and Romans never played cards. There's no mention of, there's no artwork of, there were no cards. Um, In those time periods, even the ancient Egyptians, known for using the pendulum um, for divination, um, but not cards. Um, The uh, Middle East, the Arab countries, um, you know, 
in Islam faith, there is no card playing. That's against the rules. So there couldn't be, <laughs> couldn't be there. Um, so it's just this thing where, um, people tr have tried to prove, um, a stronger connection between cards and the mystical, um, for years. Um, but really it all started with a deck of playing cards and a book, right? <laughs> and for many of us, that's how we're introduced to tarot by buying the box set that has the deck of cards and a book. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. And so that kind of leads into, um, you know, we, what didn't come to the United States from Europe? Um, why not this belief in cards as a tool for divination. Um, and of course, here in Appalachia, and especially in states like Pennsylvania, which during the Salem Witch Trials, <clears throat> William Penn, the founder of Pennsylvania, refused to have anyone tried or convicted of witchcraft because his state was founded on the principles of freedom of religion. So folk arts, folk magic, um, witchcraft, mysticism, all that stuff existed here in the backwoods for years and years and years and continue still um, in some of the older families. So there we got it. Um, if you're looking <laughs> for more information, um, I'll give you this tidbit. So if you draw, <laughs> if you're drawing from your deck um, and you draw a heart, that is something that has to do with your emotions, your family, uh, home life, relationships. And that card is thought to be connected to the element of water, uh, diamonds, um, money, confidence, finances, um, things that are very tangible. Um, that card is thought to, or that suit is thought to connect to the element of earth. Uh, the suit of clubs, um, if you choose, if you get a club, it is something that has to do with immediate change. It's something that is happening right now. Um, and that immediacy uh, kind of lends itself towards a connection to the element of fire. Uh, spades. Uh, this would uh, have something to do with um, communications, challenges connecting with people, um, things coming up that are not necessarily going the way that uh, you need them to. Um, and that is um, connected to air, the element of air. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of reading to be done about cards and their connection to mysticism. Um, and this is just, you know, my brief history for you. But I thought that it was so interesting that what we have... Um, come to kind of consider the, um, the foremost, uh, form of divination is actually something that happened much later and, uh, started as, as just a deck of playing cards. So there we got it. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you have a fantastic week. Remember, there are three opportunities each week for new content from Truth Be Told on the Club Paranormal channel on YouTube. Uh, Truth Be Told, Minuteman Report, every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. Bonnie Burkert on Wednesdays with Truth Be Told Transformation, again, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. And, of course, Tony Sweet with the original Truth Be Told, 6 p.m., uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern, uh, on Fridays. And, uh, yeah, take care, and remember, until next time, stay true. Stay true.